today we'll talk about recursive programming. Before I talk about recursive programming, I want to say a few words about iterative functions. We will use a factorial as an example. Um, what is factorial? Uh, it's a mathematical operation. For example, when I want to find three factorial, this is the representation, and here is the calculation of factorial. We are multiplying one with two and three, and we get six. This is the factorial of three factorial. I mean, six is the result of three factorial. If you want to find five factorial, so you need to multiply one, two, three, four, and five, which is equal to 120. 120 is the result of five factorial. This is the mathematical operation we are using. Okay, if we want to produce a solution for that, we can use iterative solution. What is the iterative solution? If we have a repeating operation and you use loop for that, this is an iterative solution. Let me write the function for that. Okay, uh, since uh, I'm using factorial as an example, I'm going to give factorial uh, name to my function. Uh, of course, we have an argument because I'm going to find the factorial of n, n is unknown and will be given by the user. So when user calls factorial function, user will send n to the function as a parameter. Therefore, I need to say integer n here. I'm getting n from the caller. And after I calculate the factorial, I'm going to return the result back to the caller. Therefore, I will say integer factorial here. Okay, then I can start to write my factorial function. Okay, in this uh, function, I'm going to produce an iterative solution. Therefore, uh, I'm declaring t, or let's say that this is the product, okay? and I initialize it with zero. Sorry, not the zero because I will find a multiplication of the numbers. So as an initial value for P, uh, I need to say one. And then I'm going to create a loop because I'm going to multiply numbers repeatedly. So here I need a loop, I can use for loop for integer i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to n, i plus plus. This is my for loop. And in this loop, I'm going to repeat the operation t is equal to p multiply i. I am multiplying all numbers. Okay, and this is the end of loop. So here we have a task that is going to be re repeated uh, from one to n, and at the end uh, I will return t, which is the result of uh, multiplication of the numbers between one and n, and I will return this p to the caller and function terminates here. Okay. This solution is called iterative. Okay. Because we have a task, we have a task which is being repeated uh, one or more times. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it possible to solve this uh, problem with another solution? Yes. This is iterative solution, and now I will show you how we can solve the same task by using recursive function. So here, I will write here our recursive function. Okay, uh, I will use the same function definition 
integer factorial integer n. Okay, what happens here? First of all, I'm going to call this function. Um, we need to know that if we are going to produce recursive function or recursive solution, we need to know that a function calls itself. This makes it recursive. If a function calls itself, we are calling it recursive function. And instead of using loop or loops, we are using recursive call. I mean, recursive, uh, yes, recursive call. I mean, call the function itself instead of loops, okay? So here, here, when I say three factorial, this means that three multiply two factorial. When I need to know two factorial, this means that two multiply one factorial. When I need one factorial, it means that one multiply zero factorial, okay? This is the idea. So I'm applying this idea here. How I will do that? I will say, I will say result is equal to, result is equal to n multiply factorial n minus one. So if you want to find three factorial, you will multiply n with n minus one factorial. So this is what I'm doing here. This is n and this is factorial n minus one. This is the first recursive call, okay? When the function calls itself in the memory, the same function will be copied one more time. So the same function will be duplicated in the memory. Why? Because that function will be used to call itself again. So when I call factor n minus one, my new n in this function is n minus one. It is two. So this is my new n. So what I am doing, I am calling the function again. So here n will be two and factorial n minus one will be one. So you are duplicating the same function one more time in the memory. I have the same function again in the memory, okay? So what is one factorial? Now n is one, so I'm calling factor n minus one. My new n is one, so n is this, and here I have factorial n minus one, okay? Okay, so by using this, the, name, the same name of the function, I'm calling itself again, okay? If you are producing recursive solution, the first thing, actually I'm doing it now at the end, but the first thing you have to decide is the termination point. These recursive calls will stop where? Okay? If you can decide termination point, then you can use recursive solution. Actually, I'm sure about that. That's why I'm telling you at the end, but uh, I suggest you to do this at the beginning before you start or before you decide your solution uh, way, okay? What is my termination point? Okay, let me tell you this. If I ask you, what is the factorial of 55? Do you, what do you need? You need to calculate it. You don't know what is the result of factorial 55. But when I tell you, what is the factorial, what is the factorial of zero, you will tell is one, because we know it. We don't need to calculate it, we know it. Zero factorial is one. So I can say that zero factorial is my termination point. And when 
when the cause goes in this way, when we come to zero factorial, we don't need to call the same function again because I already know what is zero factorial. The result is one. So here I will not make, I will say that the result is one. Okay, how I will do that? I'm calling last time, I'm calling factorial n minus one. My new n is zero. So here I will say if n is equal to zero, stop it. How I will stop it? I will return one back to the caller. So the result of factorial n minus here new n is zero, factorial zero will be one, then it will return back to the caller. So zero factor is one, one multiply one is one. This one will return back to the caller. Result of factorial one is one. Two multiply one is two. So two will return back to the caller. Result of this factorial two is two. Two multiply three is six, and six will return back to the caller, and six will be my result. Okay, this is the way because we called recursively in this way. Then when we come to the termination point, we start to roll back in this direction and goes to the first call. And then I will let uh, the caller that result is six. Okay, this is how it works. And then uh, here I can say uh, integer result because I didn't. And when I finish it, I need to say return, return result here. Because this is my termination point, but uh, uh, it's not, and I found a result, so I need to return it back to the caller. So I can finalize my recursive function. Actually, you can um, you can write the function uh, with less commands. So let me show that. Here, let me rewrite the function. If you like, you can write this function in this way. Integer factorial integer n. If n is equal to zero, then I can say that result is one. But if not, then I can return and multiply factorial and factorial n minus one back to the color. These two functions are the same. Actually, if you want, you can, uh, I mean, uh, decrease the number of statements more. Uh, if you remember, we have conditional expression in C language. If you want, you can use it. So you can uh, write the function more briefly. Uh, you can say for the loop, uh, sorry, for the function body, you can say that return if n is equal to zero, one, if not, n multiply factorial n minus one. So if you write this statement instead of this function body, it works. They are doing the same thing. They are producing the same result, okay? But doesn't matter. You choose this one, this one, or this one. All are recursive functions.
all are recursive functions. Why? Because they are calling themselves. Okay. This is uh, the brief explanation of recursive functions.